Football Friday Night, proudly brought to you by these sponsors. All right, all right, all right. Good marvelous football Friday night, everybody. I'm Marvin James alongside the GOAT, Frank Malloy, welcoming you to another 30 minutes of football fun. <laughs> Amen to that. Ben Kiner and Ramey join us in a few minutes as we highlight week number oh, wow. five of the high school football season. Of course, the main man starts us off. Man, I got five on it. A robbery revisited Perry hosting Peach County at Herb St. John Stadium. The series record between these two programs. 1-23. The Trojans doing the heavy lifting. Those two have last played in 2017, so they got some making up to do. Mr. Collinsworth, let go! Perry honorary captains would be the Atlanta Falcons' Casey Hayward Jr. in the green cap you see right here. He was the main reason for the Lone Panthers victory in 2007. And former Jacksonville Jaguar and Perry Panther himself, my Georgia Southern teammate Kawaki Thomas. Two great fellas right there. Now on to the action in the first quarter. Hey, hey, you get out the choke, oh. James Way. Cedric Roberts, rib rocker nominee, forces the Perry fourth down, and the Panthers would bet on themselves. Yeah, just like my boy Dr. Hodges. Armor Gordon Jr. to Travion Wright for the touchdown. It's 7-0, and he gives a shout-out to the pit crew. Yeah, he's strong. Panthers next series. Armor Gordon Jr. unloads deep to Jalen Parker. Frank Malloy got a lot of them last week. He yes. had another interception. His fourth pick in two ball games. Peach has the ball at midfield. Perry defense rises yeah. up. DeAndre Kendrick Whoa. with another rib rocker nominee wow. to force a Peach County a fourth down. He'd also have a pick six late in the game. Peach ball of fourth and three. The Trojans go for it and come up just short oh. of the marker. Perry would get the rock and they would take it the distance. Gordon Jr. to Dakari Anderson. He gets lost in the sauce. Woo! Runs all the way down inside oh, the 10-yard line. He ain't gone, gone. Not yet. Anyway, two plays later, Gordon to Demetrius Carter for another six. I'll get in there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's 14-0 P-E-R-R-Y. Woo! At the half. Opening drive of the third quarter. Armand Gordon Jr. He goes deep to number seven. Travion right all the way to the three-yard line close but not close enough. Enter DC six. Mm -hmm. Demetrius Carter dive in swish 21 nothing. That's Blackjack Peach would break the shutout with the three touchdowns with its rock Perry rock all night long. Panthers put off for of that city 35 to seven is your oh, final. Oh, that's right. That's the next game. There we go. Perry, good win. They're tough. Hey, man, I, I can guess who wins next. Uh, we do know who won the next game, but that's okay. We'll show you the highlights anyway. The Stride for the Eagles off to a fast start this fall, winning their first three games on a new head coach, Chance Jones, tonight. Whoop. Trying to keep things rolling with the win over St. Ann Pacelli from Columbus. The band plays on as the Stratford folks enjoy a beautiful night for high school football. But oh, 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 oh. folks doing the playing most of the night, Pacelli, Desi Morgan Jr. Wow. Pounding his way into the end zone big guy. for the touchdown right there. And Pacelli took a 21-0 lead. Late fourth quarter, the Eagles finally get rolling, led by this guy, oh. DeAndre Glover. He's nice run right there. And that gives the students something to cheer about. They're working hard. Then it's more Glover watching. Uh, whoops, Woo. wrong way. Going back this way. Give me a block. Come on, Give me man. another block. Yes, Keeps sir. going, making some more moves. That's good for another first down. And just keep giving it to him. Getting some blocking down full field, cuts through the hole. Uh, and after all that work, block, six, three. please cap it off, Mr. Glover. In he goes. That's a touchdown. Uh, but not enough for the home team. Football Friday night scoreboard. Pacelli gets the win 21-7. Mr. Jones. All right. It seems like I saw that score once yes. there, somewhere before. Marquee matchup now to the side of today's tailgate 13, the home of the Ace Griffins. A fine time was had by all as they really rolled out the green carpet for us tonight in our marquee matchup. The undefeated green guys welcomed in the Raiders of Northeast. Mr. Collinsworth, if you will. We begin with them rolling on the field. Here come the Griffins. Student section always turnt, crunk, and lit. Look at all those kids. Wait a minute. Is that Trish? We begin with a Raider rock snap to Reginald Glover. He's going to keep it. He's going to run it, and he's going to head out of bounds. Now the snack to Nick Woodford. This guy's so much fun to watch. Shaking off defenders, pushing like a hot knife through butter. 
Six is in for six. Northeast on the board, strike up the band. Now Griffin Rock, Caleb Scarberry gives it to Aaron Davis who will plow ahead for a first down. Scarberry faking, looks right and finds Sam Whitley with a bomb, a beautiful over the shoulder catch. The green guys are on the board. Huge crowd on hand tonight, by the way. You love to see it. Back to Northeast ball, and here comes Mr. Woodford, a.k.a. Super Nick. Woo! Loses his footing, but a sweet leap. Woodford again. Good run. It's going to go out of bounds. It's going to set up a touchdown. I noticed when I got back, I had some bad files on the camera. Apologies to the Raiders. I didn't get the touchdown, but I do have the flag waving. 13-7 Northeast at this point. Ace ball. Scar <laughs> Scarberry. Hits that man again, Sam Whitley. I was waiting for Marv to boo that one. Scarberry going to give it to Aaron Davis. Rib Rocker nominee. Oh, huge hit by Talon Sampson. Davis with the rock. Stuck in a pile. Or is he? Oh, there he is. Pops in for the TD. 14-13 ace with 25 seconds left in the half. Raiders are driving. The snap to Glover. To his left. He's going to pitch to Woodford who will be knocked out inside the 10. 18 seconds left, Glover to his left, finds Kayvon Canciaro, corner pocket. Raiders up 2014 at the half, FFN scoreboard, and they poured it on in the second half, 47-21. Did I mention a fine time was had by all today? Yes. Connor? Oy, 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 oy. <laughs> it was great. Uh, Northeast, man, they're looking real dangerous. Ben, a big time matchup, Mac McConnell Talbert State. Warner Robins Demons looking to get back in the win column, hosting Dutchtown out of Hampton, Georgia. The Bulldogs, though, starting the year with four straight Ws. And the Demons showing up for the blackout tonight at the MAC. Pick it up early stages. Dutchtown driving. This is quarterback Josiah Jarrett finding Tyshawn Brown, and he's just getting started. Staying on his feet across the Demons 30. Later in the drive, Bulldogs trying to cap it off on the goal line. Fourth and goal, and they're going to be stuffed by the Demon defense. All right, how about the stand? Elijah Antonio getting it started. Turnover on downs. Still scoreless Demon ball now. Chaz Stern will be open on the outside and breaking some ankles on the way. Down inside the 35. Nice moves. From Stern, second quarter flip the field. Malcolm Brown finishing it off. Touchdown, Demons 7 zip. Time winding down in the half. Jarrett going for the home run ball, and it's into the hands of a Demon. Rashawn Dinkins coming up and into your living room with the INT. The Demons lead this one 7 nothing at the half, but folks, that's all you need to see. FFN scoreboard, Dutchtown takes the W tonight 14-7. to Pretty pictures there, guys. Yeah, nice well done. done. Yeah. All right, more scores in overtime. Big Blue goes on the road and gets the win over North Cobb. Johnson County, they are tough this year. They beat East Lawrence. Crawford County gets a nice win over GCIS. GMC, no trouble with Riverside Military, Marv. Man, FPD is, loses a close one to Pinewood, 34-28. And Frederica, yeah, no haps on the craps right there with John Village Academy, 63 big time points in that one. And then who else we got here? Mount Vernon. Oh, man, oh. it's a close one. They take the win over Tattnall, 35-34. Now, much more to come on Football Friday night as we see if the unbeaten Blackley County Royals can stay on their throne and in the win column. But first, let's check out some of the folks who showed up on a beautiful Football Friday night to support their team, right, Marv? Oh, yeah, back to Perry Dice. These are the folks from Perry and the Peach County game, and they had a, a lot of fireworks to see. A good game to be played. Perry comes out on top. Love to see the fans there getting down in P-E-R-R-Y. Woo! The Football Friday Night Scoreboard is sponsored by Zaxby's. Tonight's marquee matchup is sponsored by Dublin Chevrolet. And Fan of the Week is sponsored by Robbins Financial Credit Union. Good Marvelous Friday and welcome back sports fans. After racking up an unbeaten regular season Whoa. a year ago, the Blakely County Royals are off to a fast start this season with three straight wins, including a shutout against Schley County last Friday on the road. Tonight, the Royals welcome West Lawrence to Shelly Hayes Field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And away we go. And here come the Royals. Oh, the purple. Royally. And here come the Raiders. The Blakely ball. Javon Butler. Yeah, he will take this big gain right there from the ground. Oh, he is. Uh, and they get get there and move the chains beast. a little bit. 
Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna just take him down easily. Nope. All right, now from the ground to the air, Eli Mullis to Marquise Brown for the touchdown. Whoa, in stride. That is poetry in motion. Seven nothing. Royals. Yeah. And here comes some more Blakely offense. The purple and gold. Mullis to Jadon Mobley. Oh man, he's gonna make a nice oh. catch, and he's gonna finally be tackled by Giovanni Jones, jo Jovian Jones. I'm sorry, I butchered that. Third and long. Mullis to Mobley again. This time for a touchdown, and it's 14 to nothing. Royals. Mm -hmm. More air Royals tonight. Looking nice. Yeah. Ooh. Second quarter. Mullis. He's going to be airing it out again, and why not? Because it's working this time to Tyreek Mack. You can count him up. 55 yards and a first down. Go. Move those chains. Then they're going to give it to Javon Butler, who finds a seam for another Royal score. A get in there. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That is a touchdown for the purple and gold. Time for BCHS and Eli Mullis. He's going to connect with his, one of his favorite players, Marquise Brown. And that is yeah. another touch down. And the Royals would roll in this one, FFN scoreboard. It is all Blakely County, 33 to nothing over Ooh. West Lawrence. Yeah, tough. All right, Southwest Patriots hoping to get things turned around tonight. Joe Dupree's crew tackling the Jordan oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Jackets at Henderson Stadium. Uh, we take you there, and here come the Patriots in the red tonight. Yes. And early on, the Patriots' defense was showing out against Jordan. Right. Check out Ronaldo Callaway, not fooled by the direct snap number 18, <laughs> bearing down on him. Nicely. And coming up with a good play right there to stop we'll the Jordan drive. Pat attack. Oh, good mom right there. Good. Uh -huh. Very nice. Got to tie the shoe. Patriots ball, Carmelo Mays. This is going to be what you call a definite fa face mask. Oh, man. Yeah. I, don't let it go once you get it, fella. <laughs> he kept going. That was a penalty, though, and <laughs> gave the Patriots good field position. And then Jamari Lester, number 47. Oh. One man misses. Two men miss. Oh, Spin move. Man. Three men miss. Oh, Robert well, Edwards jersey three right more. there. Three more. Finally bringing, I forgot about that. Robert Edwards, number 47. And then Lester, after all that work, the big hole into yes, the end sir. zone for a Southwest touchdown. Well done, my friend. Now, hey, these folks want to watch the kickoff. Watch James May Jr. Uh -oh. come flying down the field and, oh, oh a nice tackle there, you 24. Hit him low, hit him low, hit him yes, low. Yes, all starts on the special teams. And more Ronaldo Callaway. Oh, man. He was all over the field. And the Patriots for tonight, too. Football Friday night scoreboard. It's all Southwest. They head into their matchup against Northeast next week on a good note, shutting out Jordan. All right, Connor. Guys, a fun one tonight at Freedom Field. The veterans Warhawks hosting Lakeside. I showed up at the start of the second half where the Panthers led 10 to 7. Warhawks quarterback Matthew Bruce. We got the highlight? Yeah, there's the student section. They were ready to roll tonight. Warriors, Warrior, excuse me, Warrior. Warhawks quarterback Matthew Bruce hooking up with Montarius Ingram. Ingram stays on his feet. That's a new set of downs. Coach Ingram says move those chains. This is how you finish it off. Bruce looking back corner. How about the hands from Damari Franklin and the toe tap staying in bounds with the dunkaroo. Warhawks back in front 14 to 10, but Lakeside has the answer. This is Brooks Weeks. Capping off a nice drive by doing the work himself. Untouched for six. Lakeside leads by three with 8.30 to play in regulation, which means plenty of time for Bruce to answer right back. Over the middle and flying into your kitchen. Franklin again, number one in your program, number one in your heart. It's all love for the Warhawks tonight. They jump in front 21-17. Take a look at your FFN scoreboard. Veterans holds on for a 28-17 win. All right, time to check in on the Red Devils of Hawkinsville as they rolled out the welcome mat tonight for the Twix County Cobras. Mm -hmm. Fired up. Right. Week five, Coach Williamson and the Red Devils looking for their first W. And in the first quarter, Dagan Mullis. He's going to line up in offense and get a direct snap. And he has a mean juke right there. He gets run, in there Dagan, for six. Run. But the flags will fly right there. Devils are looking mighty good. Devils at Wildcat again as Najah McNeil barely touched another touchdown, and it's 24-0 Hawkinsville. They brought the D as well. They get a huge sack from Josh Killings. Yeah. He's going to celebrate right there. And then a high snap for Hawkinsville. No problem as Terry Wright hightails it across the pylon. 
Go. Nobody's going to stop him. He's gone, gone. All gas, no brakes. As Malik Brown lunges into the end zone for another score coming up right here. Oh, look at, look at the cinematography right there. Yes. Nice done, Brandon. And the Red Devils take it against the Cobras. Let's go to the FFN scoreboard. 58 to 22. Congratulations on the big W. More scores to come along. Metter gets the win over Dublin 12 to nothing. And Lamar County takes down Jackson 42 to 16. Upton Lee upends Harrelson County 29 15. And Washington County gets a big win over Glen Hills 43 to 7. Macon County gets their first W of the year, beating Greenville. Putnam County, they're strong. They shut out Butler. Montgomery County and Telfair. Telfair, a nice win. And Wheeler County beats Claxton. Oh, well, the fruitcake capital right there. Get my chicken quarters there when I was down at Southern. All right, still to come. Stops at the parking lot and the Hornets' nest. Plus, we see how the undefeated Howard Huskies fared against Pike County. Right now, we're rolling into our football Friday night quiz question. The Falcons won the NFC Championship in 1998 and oh, 2016. Yeah. yeah, they did. Name the two schools that won the college football national title in those two years. Two different schools. Hint, think orange. Oh, I got it. Football Friday Night Quiz is sponsored by Jeff Smith Ford. Oh, Thank good to you, see Demon, the Demon cheerleaders. Ass. All right. Marv got one out of two. Clemson mm -hmm. in 2016. Tennessee. Marv was on top of that one. 1998. Now, I had a chance to get the ship turned around tonight as the Jones County Greyhounds return to the barking lot. Arr, arr. Sorry. The Hounds hoping to snap a two-game losing skid with a win over Locust Grove. Ramey Cohen joins us in studio to show us exactly what happened. Rainy? That's right, Frank and Marv. Locust Grove Wildcats are 0-3 on the season. They came back in town this week to take on the J.C. Greyhounds, who are 2-2. The dogs let out of their cage. It's second and five. Devin Edmonds finds Zion Raggins, who flies down the field. A total of 39 yards, just inches away from getting a score. A strong start for the Greyhounds. Even we're doing some flips about, all right. <laughs> First and goal, Edmund hands the rock off to Drew Jones. He bulldozes his way through for a JC touchdown, seven zip. Wildcats with the punt. They can't hold on to the ball, however. Fumble on the play. We're going the other way. First quarter, 28 to nothing. Greyhounds lead. First and goal, Edmonds looks to find an open man, but then decides to take it himself, entering the land of six. 35 to nothing. Ground still on top. It's second and 10. New quarterback in now for JC, Judd Anderson. Anderson pitches it 30 yards to find Geo Wade in the end zone. All right, let's take a look at that FFN scoreboard. The Greyhounds run away with it, 62 to nothing. Oh, wow, nicely done. Ramey there. Now time to fly into the Hornets' nest where Westfield's high-powered offense matched up against Mount DeSales, the Cavaliers, of course, and the Hornets' coach right there, Coach Ralph Fitzpatrick, and MDS. Lots of scoring in this one. Cavalier ball. First, Jonathan Green hands on to JoJo Hardman. JoJo, he ain't gone. He's gone, gone. 45 yards to pay dirt. An extra point is good. Cavs lead 7-0. After a personal foul penalty against MDS, Hornets take advantage. Hunter Kirkley tosses it to Lawton Hall, number five, and you can give him a six on it. And we're tied at 7-7 after the extra point. Late in the first quarter, Hornets driving again. Kirkley keeps it, goes that way, then this way, and he's coming straight at you into the end zone. He's fired up, but of course he should be, and then Westfield takes the lead 14-7. Early in the second, Kirkley drops. He can't throw. He rolls out, still looking. David Little almost gets the sack, but Kirkley tries to flip it to Cameron Collins. Oh. Chandler Allen makes the pick deep in Hornet territory. Wow. And the Cavs would waste no time. Jonathan Green fakes, he keeps it, and then waltzes in and do the two steal into the end zone, and they were tied up 14 14. Westville answers back. Kirkley on the keeper, sheds tackles. He doesn't stop till he gets enough. Totally redeems himself. That's good for a touchdown and a Hornets lead, 21 to 14. In time, running out, Kirkley fakes. He keeps it, goes outside. One more again. He gets in the end zone from the window to the wall. FFN scoreboard, Westfield, 49, Mountain Sales, 21. 
All right, Howard Husky is making a strong statement thus far in the season. Paul Carroll's crew undefeated against Pike County. Pike County's strategy tonight is we go to the highlights. Control the ball. They did it a lot all night long. Gates lead to Lance Woodward. Plays like this kept the ball away from the Huskies' offense. But Coach Carroll's PC. defense came to play, PC. and they were tough all night long. Uh, Jeremiah Arline right here, not fooled by the fake, comes through with the nice hit right there. And then the Huskies almost came up with a huge turnover late in the second quarter off the loose ball here. Somehow, Pike County would end up with it, but the black shirt defense was strong all night long, uh, allowing uh, no touchdowns. Good night for the defense and a good night for the homecoming oh. queen, uh, Logan Parker receiving the crown. And in the background, you see the homecoming king, that is Cameron McKay. Congratulations. Football Friday night scoreboard, uh, Howard gets the win. More scores tonight. Toombs County, no trouble with Trutland. Nothing in on Hancock Central and Warren. Schley County puts 63 on the board. Chattahoochee County beats Taylor County, Marv. All right, and Lake Oconee Academy, they fall to Jasper County 27 to 8. And the good guys of Gatewood, they fall to Briarwood 22-13. Trinity Christian, they take down Creekside Christian Academy 27-18. And David Emanuel, they take down Windsor by a close one 22-14. John Hancock gets the win tonight. Wilcox County also puts 52 on the board. Nice. Thursday night game, Rutland. Yeah, another nice win for the Hurricanes. They beat Central. Don't touch that dial. You don't want to miss tonight's top play. Our rib rocker, our rib rocker, you're watching Football Friday Night on 13 WMAZ. Don't touch the dial, guy. Football Friday Night Play of the Week is sponsored by Central Georgia Technical College. And tonight's Rib Rocker is sponsored by Ortho Georgia. All right, welcome back. Let's start it off with our play of the day. Tonight's play. I think our own Brandon Johnson got this one. Yeah, that's yeah. back in Hawkinsville right there. Pulaski County. It gets blasted and fumbles, but Malik Brown takes a snap for Hawksville, but gets blasted, fumbles. Thomas Little scoops it and scores Ooh. for Twigs, and he's going to call house call Cobras for the score. Oh, very nice. All right, our rib rocker comes to you from the Ace Northeast game, the Raiders and the Griffins, and the Raiders play in the D right here. That is a mean hit right there. That's a sandwich. The Raiders can play big number 16, Halon Sampson. Bringing the lumber, sir. Mm. Done. That's why I never played. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for staying up late with us. Uh, we'll see you back here, I guess, next Friday night, guys. I think so. Mm -hmm. Excited same about place, it. Same time. All right, we leave you now with the uh, Howard Huskies band. It was homecoming, but they still got a chance to get out there and play. Enjoy, everybody. Marv, Connor, Ben, Remy, and myself. Have a great weekend. Woo! She plans to be free made in college, but also get her real estate license. And now, Mr. Cameron McKay. Cameron is the son of Will and Kimberly McKay. He is escorted by his mother, Kimberly. At Howard, Cameron is president of the Key Club, a member of FPLA, student council, DECA, yearbook staff, and the Husco game. Outside of school, Cameron is also a part of the Dream Team with Otis Redding Foundation. After graduating from Howard, Cameron is interested in attending FAMU or the University of Alabama. He plans to major in pre-dentistry and become a dentist or a